Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy here. I'm a self-taught software developer and today's video, I'm gonna give you that one weird trick that's gonna give you everything you need to know to become a self-taught software developer. That's right. I was holding back from you guys this whole time. I really had this secret sauce that I didn't tell you about because I, I didn't want to release it to the world and I'm about to tell it to you. So are you ready? Are you ready for this amazingness <laughs> that is my one weird secret trick to become a self-taught software developer? Is this. Now are you ready? You better write this down, okay? First thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna do research and figure out what type of software developer you wanna be by looking at current job postings that are out there, seeing the type of skills that you're gonna need for that future job. So once you get those list of skills that you're gonna need, then you're gonna want to design about four to six applications that are going to implement those skills, whether they be back end, front end, full stack, whatever it is. So you have a list of four to six applications, then your next job is to execute on those applications and just build out those applications. So again, four to six could be less, maybe could be more, um, but those are gonna be your core applications. They're gonna heavily focus on the skills that you want to uh, gain over the next uh, months or year. And then once you've completed all those applications, then you're gonna start applying for jobs. And when you get an interview, you're gonna prepare for interview questions. You're going to do a ton of programming challenges in preparation for that. And then once you get your job interview, you sit in there, you hit a home run, you get your first job, and that's the weird trick, all right? So now that you've got my trick, you can go away now, all right? So all the people who have attention spans for like five seconds, you can go away. The rest of you guys who have stayed this long, who know that there's quite a lot more to it than just that, I'll break down for you exactly what I consider the correct path for becoming a software developer. So let's actually break down what I talked about and how you can start applying that right now. So first things first, the first module of any strategy that's going to get you your first programming job when you are going the self-taught route is what you're going to want to do is just do research, right? So you're going to want to figure out what it is, what direction you want to head in. Now, so people get really crazy with this. They start obsessing over this aspect and never moving on from it. So here is what I would say. When you are in your beginning stages, just figure out a general direction, right? So um, if you have a compass, sometimes it's just good to know that you're heading north and not necessarily exactly where you're heading on a map. So in the same regard, if you have heard of different type of software developer roles that you think you're interested in, then that's a really good place to start. Now, if you know exactly what type of software development you want to get into, if you really want to get into machine learning, that's your thing, and you just want to go straight there, then that's obviously better, and it's, it will refine and help focus your efforts. But the first part of any strategy has to be just figuring out where or a general result that you want by the end of your endeavors, by the end of your, your you know, or where you're, you're going to, where, where you're heading towards with all of your study time and, and building of application time. So once you've figured out where you want to go, then you start doing research and seeing like what are the current job postings that are out there? What are they asking for in terms of skill? Now this can be an extensive process, meaning you may have to look at maybe 50 to 100 different job postings for a Python full stack developer or a C sharp back end developer or a C sharp full stack developer. You may have to look at many job postings just to see like what are the commonalities there? What are the things that they're asking for? And you can make a list of all of those things that you've seen that people have asked for. So once you get the pretty clear sense of what potential employers are looking for when they are going to hire people, that's when you actually go to the next stage, which is plan out your portfolio. So, you know, the portfolio stage is another sort of bottleneck in people's <laughs> stage of, of trying to go the self-taught route because what happens is they start fretting over the best application they could possibly write. They're, they start obsessing over like, what's the best thing that I could write? What's the next you know, big app that I can write that really will impress people? It's when the truth is that really the way that you should look at your applications in your portfolio, right? Like the way that you should view your portfolio is that it's for you. It's for your learning. It's not for it's not for other people to like fawn over you. It's not for to show off to the world. Um, that's not the primary reason. I would say the primary reason is you set it up in a way that makes you grow your skills, right? So right now, let's say you don't have any skills, but you want to become a C sharp developer. Well, 
I, one thing I can tell you, you really need to learn is you really need to learn unit testing. You really need to learn things like dependency injection, inversion of control, right? So that would be something that should be on your list. So that way when you're building an application, you need to implement inversion of control, some sort of inversion of control, or some, you maybe implement some unit testing framework. So really the portfolio is for you. It's for you to focus on your skills that need to be improved. Don't worry about what the best app is. Yes, are there good ideas for apps and bad ideas? Sure, it's definitely on a continuum, but at the end of the day, you don't have to fret over it. You um, Once you pick something and you know it's pretty good, don't obsess over it, don't come back to it constantly and think to yourself, like, is this the best thing to do? Really, it's about you and building up your skills and making sure that you're hitting that list of skills that we talked about in the beginning. Now, the next part is equally as hard as the parts before, if not the hardest, because this is the, the longest part of the journey, right? So when you're actually executing on building your projects, you're going to go through months and maybe even a year or more of time where you're just sitting there and executing the plan, right? So you're actually having to build out applications. You have to figure out all of these complicated concepts that you've never quite heard before. So you're gonna have to find resources, you have to stay committed. Honestly, most of that stuff, in my opinion, is between, is right here, right? It's, it's between your ears. It's like, how do you stay committed? How do you stay disciplined? How do you stay enthusiastic over the long course of time? Because this takes months and not days or weeks, right? Like I don't, I've never ever believed in anyone uh, becoming a developer in like, you know, 12 weeks or something like that. If you, if you can get a job as a developer for 12 weeks, awesome, good for you, but most of your, your actual uh, uh, training will come on the job when you get your first job and that's good for you and you should definitely take advantage of that. But more than anything else, that process of executing on your game plan. So you have your game plan in your hand, you say, I know exactly what I have to do, but waking up every morning and just executing on it for a long period of time takes a lot more than just you know, just having just having the game plan, you have to figure out how to stay consistent. And it's all about consistency. I've said that many times before, you gotta spend at least, again, bare minimum 15 minutes a day, but really it's about getting that 15 hours or more per week. So 15 minutes a day is not gonna cut it, but at least if you can keep the ball rolling with 15 minutes a day, really aim for about two hours per day on average, 15 hours per week, that's where you're going to make the most of, of your time. And so once you've completed all your applications, and again, when I say completed, I mean completed them to, to completion. You don't have 50% of one done and 8% of one done, but you're like, oh yeah, this is done. Then you move on to the next part. We're actually going to start applying for jobs. Now, at this part is pretty easy to me. There are a couple different strategies. One is just networking, right? Like, so you can network with friends, let them know that you are looking for a job. You can go to job sites, you can throw out your resume and all of the job sites. I mean, you should be, <clears throat> I think I had it close to 50, it's like 40 or some app applications that I had sent out um, and not really heard any responses, but you should be shotgunning it out there, right? You can reach out to recruiters, you can reach out to random people on GitHub, you should be going to meetups, you should be, uh, you know, again, like anything you can do just to get your foot in the door somewhere where, where you can possibly sell yourself, right? <laughs> As I say, I don't like that word, but at the end of the day, that's what you're doing is you're, you're showing people your best qualities and you're saying, hey, look, I'm really dedicated. I'm really uh, 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 dedicated to this process of becoming a software developer. I want to work for you. What do I need to do to get there? So that's the next process is applying for jobs, which again, 100% the goal of applying for jobs is to get in front of somebody who can hire you. Okay, so that's the next step in the pipeline. So once you get someone to, you get in front of someone, right? Like once you're in that stage of the process, what you wanna focus on is three things, right? So one is you wanna focus on who you are in yourself. You wanna focus on what you're presenting to the world just in general. You gotta bring the most positive attitude you have. You have to bring the most, um, you really have to bring your best self to the table when you're going to job interview, but not the fake one, not the one that where you're smiling through your teeth going, I am great. It's about really to me about just being your positive, upbeat self. So really think about how to present yourself best, how to bring out your best behaviors when you go into job interview. There's plenty of material on this. I will cover it more in future videos, but if you want to know specifically what I'm talking about, it's just about being a positive, upbeat person, be on time, wear the right clothes, like be professional, but always you know, be, be like eager and enthusiastic. It's about the vibe you bring to your interview. That's number one, right? That you have to do that. I don't care how technically skilled you are, but if you're not bringing like the juice, as I like to say, like the good vibes and the good energies to your interview, like good luck, like good luck with the rest of it. You're not, even if you do get hired, it would probably be for the wrong company because they're gonna hire people who are, you know, I don't know, just like, it's just not the right fit. So that's number one, bring the juice, bring your best self, as, as I like to say. Number two is you need to prepare for technical questions. So again, 
now that you know where you're kind of heading, you know, know what type of job you're looking for, you should be able to talk about technical skills or technical questions just based on your experience for one, but then you should also be reviewing or, or making questions for yourself or finding questions that you can answer and just recording yourself, answering those questions, answering it to friends who are willing to sit there and listen to you talk, Whatever it is, just figure out a way to practice doing technical questions, practice uh, answering technical questions that you don't know, have a really good way of explaining something that you don't know. I always had an answer for when I didn't know a question that was being asked to me. I was always going to be able to answer that and say I had like a, a routine for it. So that I, I never was like on the spot and being like, uh, uh, you know, and got nervous and then all of a sudden it just it looks really bad. Now the last thing, that is obviously really important is you have to prepare for potentially a programming challenge of some sort. So I was lucky in uh, both jobs that I've, I've gotten. I've ne never really had to do a programming challenge. I did sort of had to do one, but I didn't have to do one on the spot. But believe me, you know, for the next place that I ever want to go to, if I ever want to go to Google or something like that, I absolutely have to focus on programming challenges and at that time I will. So you at least need to be prepared to do some sort of coding challenges. So there's leak code and then there's the cracking the code book. Uh, I have it, it's funny, I actually have it in my collection. I can't recall off the top of my head, but you guys all probably know about it. The cracking the code book is like the Bible for people who are trying to get a job. As the time gets closer to when you're actually gonna be applying for a job, you're really gonna wanna hit that book hard. You're gonna wanna find programming uh, challenges in, just in general on any of the, the websites that are out there right now that will allow you to do that because you it's almost like a boxer training for a fight you you don't want to really be good at programming challenges all the time that's kind of like a skill that i don't really necessarily see being tr like companies are in, are in demand for but when you're going for a job interview you definitely have to have that skill of uh, being able to do a programming challenge, being able to explain what you're doing, and having the confidence to just do it in general, those that's really important. So as you get closer and closer to your job application time and your job interview time, you wanna be ramping up your programming challenge skills, as I like to say. So that's really it. That's the big overall arching plan. So you want to do some underlying research about what you wanna do and pick a direction. Then you wanna you know, create a portfolio of applications that reflect those skills that you research. You're gonna to wanna to execute on the plan, which could take a very long time. You have to figure out how to be consistent over time. Then you start applying for jobs, which really to me means that you're just trying to get in front of people who can hire you. And then lastly, you're going to actually work on the job interview part of it and make sure you're 100% prepared. And then you obviously will get your first job and go off in the sunset and you'll be good, right? So that's, that's the ideal plan and that's what I have really found worked, it worked for me, and I've seen it work for other people who I have encountered who have gone the self-taught route. So that's it, that's really my plan for people with long attention spans, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any feedback in the comments below. As always, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Anytime I put out new content, you'll get content that is all based around the idea that I want to teach anyone, anywhere, how to become a self-taught software developer, how to prepare yourself to make that next step and, and change in your career no matter where you're at, no matter who you are. So that's what my channel is all about. Now, if you wanna stay in contact with me, I have made a free Facebook group that you can go and join. You can join that at andysterkowitz.com forward slash group. Come join in there. We have really good conversations. I try to keep it high level, making sure that the content is and quality of the content in general is just really good. So come join it there and get even more content from me. Other than that, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Peace out.